I just wanted to make a small update video about E3 because the last video is already one year ago or something and a lot has happened since then. E3 is an open source project of mine and it is an Arduino based Ethernet connected stepper motor driver or stepper motor controller or stepper motor. The stepper motor is one of these guys, a tiny motor that moves in certain steps instead of speed and a normal motor you just connect power and then it runs and a stepper motor you can control uh, individual steps for this one uh, for example 200 steps per revolution so they are very precise but not very fast and not super strong but uh, for lots of automation applications for example in 3d printers or in robotics uh, where you need precise motion uh, several most of the motors are used and especially in scientific research or in uh, test assemblies or prototypes you need these very often for example if you have a telescope and you want to move it in a certain direction in a very precise location you need these stepper motors for example and usually it's very complicated to control these stepper motors so for this stepper motor you need a stepper motor driver this for example this is a tiny stepper motor controller but then you still need an arduino or something so this then you have to connect these two and then to this you connect the stepper motor and this is super complicated usually um what i thought i would build a controller that can be controlled from the network so via ethernet and over the last few years, I developed in different prototyping stages uh, this controller. This is the latest version actually. And what it does, it takes an ethernet input. So you can connect it to your normal house ethernet or to a normal switch or router or anything you have and connect it to DHCP network. So it gets an IP address on startup and connect it to your stepper motor, which is this one. This is a flat kind of uh, stepper motor. When you connect to power and ethernet, you um, automatically get an IP address via DHCP, and then you can send commands to the motor. For example, steering commands like 100 steps in uh, left direction with this speed, for example. And for this, I have written a tiny web server. I found this was a bit complicated, so I wrote a small iPhone app. It looks like this. And then you can enter the IP address, which is one point. 30 in this case, so I would just enter it here, here. So I have the IP address entered and when I press some button, the motor will spin. So if I, oop. okay. <laughs> Makes sense, right? I can also change the steps it takes. So it's a few more steps, the speed, I can make it a bit faster. I can also, this is uh, freewheeling basically, and I can also make that it uh, is holding the position. So I can't move this, so I'm not moving the shaft, that's the lever I'm moving. Make it slower, make it faster. And the cool thing is that I can connect as many stepper motors as I want to. So if I have a network switch with 16 ports, I can just connect 16 Ethernet controllers and then control 16 motors at the same time, which is pretty cool, I think. And send commands to them from any computer or machine or iPhone or whatever from the, in, in the network and send steering commands. Why am I so not sharp? And I think this is very cool. And what I did since last year or the last video, um, a lot has changed. First of all is before uh, one year ago, this was based on an Atmega328, which is basically an Arduino Uno. And you could program it with an USB connector um, from the Arduino IDE. And the code was all written in Arduino C++ in the Arduino IDE. And it was very messy. And then the Atmega was too slow. And they were also very, 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 very expensive. Um, very expensive, uh, like six euros per piece. And then I decided I need to switch to a better controller, which is the stm 32 f 103 c 8 b something. It's basically a 72 megahertz instead of 8 megahertz uh, processor. It's more storage, more, much more RAM, and is in general much faster and more used in the industry. So the design now looks something like this, um, though I changed this for a micro USB back um, because I had some problems with this connector and with the USB bootloader on the STM32. So there is an, um, let me show you. So now it looks like this. So this is basically the controller. So the STM uh, microcontroller this is the TMC2209 uh, stepper motor driver. These are some shunt resistors to measure the current on the on the stepper motor. The voltage converter from 5 to 32 volts to 3.3 uh, volts for the for the logic. Uh, here is the USB connector. This is power input uh, with XT30 connector. This is a CP2102 uh, USB to serial converter. 
this is the Ethernet connector. Uh, this is for end stop and e stop. On the other side, you have this display uh, that shows some data like IP address, uh, running states, e stop, and DHCP or USB mode, uh, voltage, and the shaft angle. And the shaft angle is actually pretty cool because you can detect the shaft position with this encoder. And it works like this. So you have this stepper motor, and on the back side, you see the, the shaft spinning. And on that, I have a small magnet. Uh, like these magnets and they are glued on and when they spin you can detect the motor shaft position with this encoder with a quite high resolution i think it's one tenth of a degree and even less which is pretty cool and in the end you just stack these two boards on top of each other stack of uh, pcbs ethan connector display power and usb yes and currently i'm working on a few more features also from the old version to the new version i switched from a two layer a two layer pcb layout to a four layer pcb layout which is was a very <laughs> smart decision because it got very complicated very fast um, because the density is, is very high for a two layer board and okay for a four layer board so um, yeah that was also a big decision to make also i have a reset button and a flashing button uh, in the next version this is not implemented in this current hardware version but in the next version i will have two buttons one for reset one for flashing currently i have to connect uh, these wires to flash the controller with new firmware and as i'm currently developing i need to uh, do this quite this quite often uh, later in the product or in the finally released version i will have both so first a uh, button to enable the flashing mode and also pads to sort of somewhere to to make it easier to um, write code and to flash the firmware on it what i also did was i read i rewrote all the code yeah basically everything has changed from like a very large file where everything was crammed in into a much more organized and object oriented layout it's not perfect currently because i got lost a bit on the track to clean code so i still have to do a lot of work on this side but what i'm still missing is uh, a few features for example server control so if i just enter an angle via the interface it has to find out by itself in what step mode and everything and what speed it uh, goes to the yeah the ask position uh, so i have to still write the position uh, implementation and a few other uh, features that might be interesting for example um, if you want to steer multiple motors at the exact same time you need to send the command they have to execute before the command that goes to all controllers at the same time we have broadcast um, so this is still some logic i need to uh, come up with and need to figure out but the general concept is like the, the normal stuff works so i can send commands to steer the motor in a certain direction with a certain speed with a certain step mode so it's an abstraction of the normal options you have with the tmc 2209 stepper motor controllers but connected to an ethernet outlet where you can send udp request or udp messages in json encoded format to the controller to execute these basically bare bone um, um, commands on the TMC2209 stepper motor controller. Uh, all the smarter stuff like uh, the SRAMP, for example, is a cool, cool feature I want to have. So it starts, accelerates slow and then it's fast and uh, decelerates slower uh, so it doesn't stall while uh, spinning. Also, the position thing with PI or PID um, feedback is also not implemented. I still need that. Uh, yesterday, I wrote the sensor feedback, which is quite cool. I will show it in a second. And yeah, the other stuff is homing. It already works, but still needs some refinement. So I have this E stop and N stop uh, Connectors, so I can just plug in some cable with a connector or with the end stop on the end and then I can for example home an access for example in a 3D printer setup you need to home the access before before you run the code because then you need basically need to know where home is in, in most machines and then you can uh, run this homing routine run all access into the zero position and then from there uh, do the stuff you need to do um, position feedback I still need to implement uh, so I need like a PI or PID loop I'm not sure about that completely because what I also need to do is build a scheduler or something um, because I need to um, do lots of tasks at the same time. Position of the motor shaft um, quite often for PI control I need to get data from the ethernet buffer from the ethernet controller and um, I need to run the stepper motor driver and also maybe the display and all of this at the same time essentially so I need to find some good way to uh, make a compromise between um, yeah speed of the display flash for example which is less important so 10 times per second would be definitely enough but getting the data from the uh, encoder has to happen much more often so i still need to build this scheduler thing and when i did this um, i think we can build cooler features 
what I did yesterday, I built this uh, sensor feedback command I will show you now. So I have this tiny script that runs on my machine and then I go into another script. I will just send this message to the um, controller, basically just in JSON and code string uh, that just contains the mode. Before it was a drive mode, now it's just mode because now I can also, it's not only drive modes, but also sensor modes and everything. So I changed that to mode. Um, so I will just send this uh, JSON encoded message with the mode uh, five and mode five means send feedback or sensor, feed sensor feedback. And what it will do, um, it will send all the data it has uh, to a certain IP address. For example, in this case, the uh, standard IP address is the IP address the request came from. And to receive this, I will just listen to a UDP port 5000, which is a standard port for um, this sensor feedback. And if I play press to switch the IP address, so it's 30 currently, and press play. I will get a lot of data from the controller. And if I spin the motor shaft, oh, <laughs> I can't spin the motor shaft because, and if I spin the motor shaft, um, you can see the angle changes here. And it, happen oh, and it happens, I think, 100 times a second, it's pulling data from the controller and you can see all the data here. Angle, um, also the voltage. So if I change the voltage slide here, it changes from yeah, D9 to 13 volts, 12 volts. So I see all the uh, data in real time of the controller in my in my script here. So this is just a JSON uh, encoded uh, format. Uh, you can also read that, of course, with any language uh, you know, because every language supports UDP and JSON, I think. Yeah, this is what I built yesterday. Today I will build uh, the PIE or PID loop, maybe, or maybe work with the scheduler. I'm not sure about that. Yeah. I think that was it and oh no, one more thing. Um, this project is funded by Bundesministerium für Bildung und Forschung, Prototype Fund and Open Knowledge Foundation. And this means that this project receives a substantial amount of money for the open source work. This is super cool because this essentially turned into my full-time job for the next six months. So September, October, November, December, January, February is my full-time job now instead of being a student, uh, being a full-time open source developer on Ether3. And this also involves lots of code. This also involves some managing time and stuff and money and yes so this is um, basically my full-time job now and i can write more features and this is very cool so if you have any questions or requests for features or ideas hit me up write a comment or issue or anything and i'm very grateful for that so thank you thank you very very, very much for having me this round in the prototype fund and if you find this project interesting and want to stay updated about the progress, please consider subscribing and leaving a comment or a like or anything, share, whatever. Thank you. Bye.